Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be actually covering a Magnus build here with Melt. I do believe we actually have him on a more unique variant of Magnus, an auto attack oriented based instead of a full tank. Today we've got Amir with us. How are you doing today, Amir? I'm doing really good. Getting to see a new character in a... Or getting to see an old character played in a different way is... Uh always something i like to see we usually don't see too many people playing auto attack magnus pretty sure he's still the character with the highest basic attack amp scaling um i think it's like four point uh, i don't remember exactly it's uh something around like four uh, percent i think exactly with a four percent attack speed scaling as well every level not many characters get these kind of stats well i know for sure that is definitely a high scaling stat and one of the things that's really interesting because we we have noticed like there are, have been auto attack magnuses showing up but a lot of them run accelerators so that they can auto attack really quickly really fast for a short burst mel plays a little bit different he likes to run that heavy knee pads be a bit more tanky probably allow him to get into a fight a little bit easier and also avoid a nasty cc that'll give him a little bit of movement speed to kind of catch up but we can already see with like his initial build he is very very auto attack oriented more of the damage dealer for his team now for those that aren't familiar with magnus we'll go over his abilities a little bit here for his passive it's tough body so when he hits an enemy with an auto attack or a skill he gains a stack of uh tough body which increases his defense by one percent per stack and this can stack up to 10 times so an auto attack gives him one stack and skills give him two stacks so with this type of build will let him stack it up pretty quickly and at max stacks, he also gains HP recovery per second um, by uh, increased by three. Yeah, and Magnus passive is a very weird but fun ability. It being percent based uh, health in or percent based defense increased allows him to start stacking things like uh, I know a lot of tank Magnuses like going D shard for this because technically D shard is being increased by your passive stack and then um the h the flat hp that you're getting every second um i don't believe that this can be blocked by your or like this can be reduced by heal cut um last i've been aware of this has actually just been a flat amount of hp that you get every second so it shouldn't be heal cut re reduced right yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that myself, but that is very interesting if that is how that works, because that makes it a lot more impactful for sure. Uh, going over the, the his core kit of his abilities, his first ability would be Broken Bolt. That's his Q. Uh, this is just a skill shot. It's him setting out that boulder, and it slows enemies by 40% for two seconds. So that's like your, your main slow button. Uh, his W is 17 versus 1. This allows him basically to spin, hitting any uh, spin dealing damage. So it's his spin to win button. And hitting an enemy reduces its cooldown by 0 0.5 seconds. And also increases his tenacity by 50% while, while it's active. So big way for him to just not be able to get CC'd. Or when he does get CC'd, he's immediately going to be able to break out of it. Uh, the next thing is Heavy Strike. That is his wall slam. So he always hits the target to the left. That's really important. It's always to the left side of Magnus. And if it hits them into a wall, it'll actually stun them. And lastly, his ultimate, Bike from Hell. We haven't seen that one yet, but he will basically ride his bike in for seven seconds. He'll deal massive AoE damage to a target that he hits, but it'll also explode if he hits a wall or if he releases the bike early by repressing R. Yeah, and uh, a lot of Magnus's kit is very dependent on him being able to live in these fights. His ult giving him 10 stacks instantly on his... Actually, I think it scales up, sorry. Um, yeah, level 1 giving 4 stacks, level 2 giving 7, and then at max level for your ult, it'll give you 10 stacks of your passive, instantly getting you all the way up to that 10% bonus defense and getting you that, health per se that bonus health per second. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. And I think that's actually probably the main reason why Magnuses like Melt here want to go that more do damage oriented build. Because at the max level of R, he can just simply 
ride into the fight, jump onto whoever he wants, which is most likely going to be one of the squishies trying to assassinate them, gain all of his stacks so he's now tankier than most characters, and then just auto attack someone down. And uh, also seeing his build come out already is uh, not what you usually see on Magnus. Maybe you see this on auto attack Magnus often, but this is not a build you see too often in ring. Getting the Blaster Helm online early and then going Alexander's, which I assume if we're going Alexander's, it means that we will also be going Ghillie Suit, as I know a lot of crit characters don't really like to stack both Alexander's and Racing Boots, but we do see him ulting forward, going on to our Bianca, going to... That was one auto and I think just an E after, taking the Bianca down to so low health. Well, exactly. And just going to slow, keep going forward. It's uh, one more auto and he's dead. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. And yeah, the, the build is really interesting where he's running the like blaster helmet. Like you never see that. But as it just shown, right? Bike from hell into the back line targets the Bianca. Now, normally, I think I think if it wasn't Bianca, he would have killed the character. Bianca just scared him off slightly because he didn't want to run in through Reign of the Vampire Queen, healing Bianca and making it so that she is able to sustain longer in the fight. So he had to step away a little bit, respect that that ability. But if that was any other character, I'm pretty sure he just sticks onto them and they drop dead. Yeah, and it's actually nice to see him trying to look for something there. I think he might do the same here. I'm looking for a slow hard Williams actually gonna be going forward trying to frontline for us, and I don't think we're going to be able to uh contain the fight in where we want. I think our Meg or sorry, our Marcus, Marcus is actually going to be doing a lot of work. He was able to take down two. I think we're going to go for a revive and then... I think we're going to get timer. <laughs> we might. From here, they both have to run and and just hope that they can make something happen. Because their timer is running very low. Yeah, my urge to go and watch that fight is driving me crazy. But, you know, we got to keep attention on, on, on our... our Mar I got to see it. <laughs> two seconds I, I, oh they're actually able to steal the timer back as he was in stasis <laughs> which was very unfortunate for her, but and... yeah, we're seeing i wonder if you can actually solo both of these bears as not too many characters can I, he's kind of looking he's, like he's doing it yeah doing it with these actually what just the heck hit the blast plant uh and then we're we're just able to, to clear that getting a tree i assume that's going to go into our ghillie suit and then we're going to be looking for a force core for our arm and i i'm wondering if uh if he does actually want to go blood weapon as i think monkey king bar is pretty okay for the build that a lot of crit magnuses are going you just want that attack range attack power attack speed it's all on the, the item it's all the stats you need and it's only for a mithril so you should be fine going for that upgrade instead for sure. I know that Monkey King Bar isn't the like biggest upgrade. It's kind of lackluster in comparison to a lot of upgrades in the game, but it is still an upgrade. So I wouldn't be surprised that's the case. And here we go. We have him coming in a little bit late, but oh my gosh, just instantly obliterating down the Abigail. And I think he's just going to win this fight now. Yeah. Ra Han Wu goes down. Katja just goes down. <laughs> she just has to stand there and watch as he wails on her. That is so much damage. He just comes in late and it's like, that's all that matters, right? Like he can just swoop in and bonk people. This this build is kind of cooking. Yeah, he would just... The second he was able to get into that back line, start right-clicking them, the Abigail got stunned into the wall, instantly fell over. The Hyunwoo, I don't think he realized how much damage we were going to pump out because it did not seem like he was ready for the amount of damage either. And then, sadly, our gotcha pressing ult, technically stunning herself in that corner, not realizing that this Magnus isn't a regular tank Magnus. We are full damage. We will knock you into the wall and then put you on the floor. No, and for also sure. picking up two meteorites. Yeah, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He's already almost basically full build here at this point. And yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a big factor too, is that I don't think the Kacha was ready for Magnus to do that much damage. I think, I think she thought she had enough time to get the kill with the ultimate and then like E away. But in reality, it just took like three autos and she was completely dead. Yeah, a big 
benefit to us playing um, Crit Magnus in specific is just that a lot of players are used to regular tank Magnus. They're not used to seeing a Magnus hold a golf club and then smack them in the face a couple times and fall over on the floor. No, exactly. And actually, we do have a radar enabled now. The only thing not upgraded is the weapon, which I think is always going to be the lowest prio. I think we're probably going to be greeting most likely for blood is my assumption. But I think if we get a mithril or if we find an opportunity to do a tempo buy, we might just go the monkey king bar for the fact that it's just a minor upgrade and just get the nice stats. Yes, it does seem like uh, I think we're just pathing for a couple of extra farm. Maybe trying to secure some extra zones, or sorry, extra zone in uh, the neighboring zones of hospital. And I think they know that temple is going out, so they don't really have to worry. Trying to secure something for the um, objective that's spawning up. But actually, it seems like we don't care about the four score. I think they realize that they're just too ahead of the game and just need to start looking for people on the map. Doesn't yeah. really look like anyone on their team wants the four score either. And I think that's and a now big they factor. Become aware yeah, I think that's a big factor. Um, Viking forward. Oh, right into it. Yeah, but then look, look at this. Bianca is gonna. She doesn't even get to stasis. She just gets melt decides that that's the target, and even blinked to make sure that he finished off the <laughs> ISIL. Yeah, they're they're really really strong right now. So I don't think they needed that four score. And I think again, like you mentioned, they're a team. If you look at their items, I mean, William wants the tree. Marcus wants a tree and probably meteor. So none of them even want. But even then, they still TP back to it because it's still up. I think they're going here yeah. more, though, not for the objective. I think they want to fight. <laughs> I actually think they took like that they TP. Might have been, uh, yeah, they might have been looking for some sort of a fight because what, they're going to grab this forest core. Everyone's wondering, what are we doing with this? Um, Melt can't slam it. And I don't think that either of our teammates are really looking to slam it's it either. Hermes, right? Got to be Hermes now. Uh, probably going to be Hermes to our Marcus. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like it. But it's a very awkward slam. I think, yeah, as you were saying, we're probably just TPing here to try and see if anyone else is taking it and just run at them and take the fight. Uh, well, it didn't work out for them. But hey, they now have another free item. The team has been kind of really enjoying some really good RNG and some good prio. As Wolfie is oh. about to get caught here on the on the Kathy and we do actually have a little bit of engaging here comes the bike let's see how it plays out goes through the slips past the back I think that's the biggest thing here that like melt is so good at is him able to just slip past characters to get to priority targets you know gets right onto the Tia dodging the Lennox doesn't get the Tia because Tia has to dash away but then is leaves Lennox to themselves and they just die yeah being able to decide who the priority target is and then also make sure that you're dashing past or sorry biking past their uh, front line is it's a skill that i don't think is uh, appreciated often enough no for sure and it looks like we're gonna be stealing our teammates oh i think they might have been buying our tax skill for us and i do think blink three for magnus is very important him not really having a good way to uh augment his movement speed and no real dash after he's used the bike which a lot of the time is used on the engage is uh it makes it very hard for him to play a lot of the latter halves of the fight i do think our william's probably going to be going camouflage suit with this one if not beautiful garment and there yeah beautiful garment coming out mm -hmm. and but, also yeah. uh interesting thing that you mentioned there is that i do i do agree especially with how melt has been playing this game i think it's really important to acknowledge how that blink functions a lot of times what melt's doing in these combats is the second that he is off of his priority target that he's already determined who he's going to combo onto he is blinking to the next target just so he can get into melee range so we can auto attack to be effective so blink three is just going to let him gap close even more so he can blink on top of them and then keep up on top of them as for longer yeah it's very important to make sure that he is able to keep putting uh, keep putting out damage as that is all his build is. He doesn't have as much tank stats as something like his Marcus. And realistically, I think he has more damage than his William. So if he's able to start pumping out all of his damage, then it should be winning him the fight every time. No, for sure. And yeah, it's kind of funny to say that though, because like 
Marcus is at 3.5k, right? But Magnus is only about a thousand less HP. He's more than William, but he's got more damage stats than William. So he's definitely really terrifying. And there's the flip coming in and then instantly into a wall slam. It's just, look at that damage. Yeah, we do use the blink though to respect the Tia. But now we bike in. We know that the tank is the priority target because we've already invested so much and it's just, it's just clean. Yeah, it looks like we will be trying to take Wick right after. Also, during that fight with the passive, it's this build is deceptively tanky as we're able to hit 141 defense. This was before we hit level 19 and we we're just 141 defense while we have all of these offensive stats. We have at this rate, I think we're at like 80, actually, sorry, 76% basic attack amp, which just means that all of our crits are going to be doing so much damage, getting an 818 damage crit onto the wolf. Like, not many characters are going to be able to see these numbers. No, exactly. And I think one thing also to really mention about what you said there about it being deceptively tanky, I think one thing to really keep in mind, too, is that don't take that as, hey, I can run this and be the solo frontline. Mel, I think, specifically is taking this because he does have Marcus as his secondary frontline. And most of these fights, he is going in after the fight has started. He doesn't want to be focused. He's tanky enough to be able to take a duel, but he is not tanky enough to survive a full team wailing on him. He needs to have that, that focus fire on someone else for him to be able to truly enable this type of play. Yeah, it's very nice to see. You saw the Marcus ult in for uh and go for the flip and then after that we start going forward smacking the person he flipped over to us and then i really like the fact that he blinked away and looked for the bike re-engage because we know that we still have the tool to get back into the fight we don't have to start blinking forward and hoping that we get out just blink back take the safe play look for the bike back in and uh then he was able to secure the fight even without actually connecting the bike yeah, my favorite part is is that he he acknowledged that he didn't have to go for the back line and just took out the, the tank. And oh, there's the target on the back line. That's the bomb he targeted, but doesn't need to. He actually backs up knowing that he didn't have the space for it and goes on to the Magnus. But it, we actually... Now, this is the awkward part. This is the part where I think this is the most awkward for the build. He is kind of out of the fight now. He respected the Sabame, had to space away. But because of that, he tried to finish the Magnus... Magnus got out, and now his only way to re-engage is going to be that blink. So if he sees an opportunity, I won't be surprised if we see a raw blink if we fight before the 30 seconds for his all to be back up. But I don't know if, uh, if we'll actually be seeing that 30 seconds come up, as it seems like our team just wants to go forward. We want to fight these guys the second that we're able to. Maybe actually using this boar to can gap the... Oh, we actually... Tried to walk back into the second board to close the distance. And yeah, there's the ult coming down. We blink forward and uh, just secure that this guy is CC'd, stunned, knocked up, knocked back. Everything you can think of to make sure that he is on the floor as fast as possible as well. Oh, for sure. And yeah, like I said there, the second that Meld had that opportunity, that window of engage, immediately using that blink is his two tools, blink and, uh, and uh, ultimate. If he doesn't have those, there's no way for him to get near a target. So he's always playing around these two cooldowns. But as we can see, like Blink's already back up, which is kind of scary. Yeah, for any team that is running away from him, a Blink 3 is, I'm pretty sure, a 45 second cooldown. And on top of that, every time you get the full down or the full execute on a player, you're getting cooldowns refunded, which means that realistically, you take one person down, this is a 30 second cooldown, you wipe an entire team, this thing's just back up already. Exactly. And what do you think of this hiding spot? I always like this one for the line of sight. No one ever expects it. And this little cubby actually blinds you. You're not able to see if you're running around this corner like this team's about to. Okay. They did check it <laughs> with a good scan, but if they didn't check that scan, they would not have seen him and he would have had a surprise engage. Yeah. I think this is the first time I've actually seen someone try and abuse that spot. We do see a double flip coming out from the Marcus. We see both of our teammates blinking onto the Tia that gets flipped. Everyone trying to kill her. Sadly, we're unable to. We did take the Lennox down in the middle of that. Tia was able to get out. No blink. Coming up in another 30 seconds, though. Ult coming up in another 30 seconds as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we just try and find this Tia and run at her. 
as I think we're too tanky for her to really kill. Oh, and yeah, we just see Ian knocked into the wall. Sadly, that I think is... we weren't paying too much attention, realizing that there was a very scary Magnus in front of us trying to one-shot us into a wall. No, for sure. I think they were looking at the, the chase that was happening up there and thought they could just stay on point. But yeah, immediately just the wall slam into bat skill, guaranteeing the, sec the CC chain and just instantly died. Yeah, this is a very... I think a lot of Magnus players know about it. A lot of people that play against Magnus might not, as we've seen, been seeing a lot of less of Bat Magnus being played. But because Bat Skill is also a wall stun when it connects with a wall, or sorry, yeah, it's also a wall stun, um, we connect our E into a wall, and then we're allowed to connect our D skill into a wall because it's just very free. With our D skill being the skill shot, it's slightly harder to connect. So we just wait till we get the free E and then go for the D skill and we essentially have a like 3 second, 2.5 second stun as long as we connect it with a wall. Also we are seeing this Magnus go in, we just go in, try and auto attack him, <laughs> the Yuki jumps forward, 3 auto attacks, he's on the floor, we're looking at I think the Magnus now, another 3 auto attacks and then Tsubame, we'll just give her 3 more and uh, it's just so much damage coming out from crit build. Yeah, I mean, that was a really interesting final fight there. We'll talk about it just slightly before we wrap up here. Is that he took that fight and able to protect the William. He actually didn't go for a backline priority. He just hit whoever went near the William was the easiest target and just wailed on them, which is really impressive. And that is honestly really exciting to kind of see how a different way to take Magnus is. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of highlight of Magnus and we'll see you in the next one.